It is early here on the Fremont campus of Ohlone College, and we are officially ready to go here on this Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023. The first Ohlone College playoff game in men's basketball history under the rain for Jordan Lee, the first year head coach. Fans, it's another one of those day in the life videos of being a broadcast announcer. This is a day in the life of being a basketball broadcast announcer. Let's do this, baby. Butte versus Ohlone College. It's gonna be a huge game. We are expecting a large crowd full of uh, student athletes, uh, friends and family for the players and a ton others. So we are ready to go. Let's get rolling. All right, so originally this segment was going to be me talking to the camera, talking to you guys about how I prepare for my games and typically uh, what my routine looks like. Uh, but I decided to use uh, this segment for a voiceover instead. So let's get into it. So typically before each game, the preparation starts the night before a game or even two nights before a game depending on what's going on and what type of matchup it is. You want to make sure that you have every single thing up to date. I'm talking roster sheets, I'm talking statistic sheets, your schedules, because in the CCCAA, schedules do change here and there, dependent on weather, dependent on uh, factors. Uh, for baseball, it's mainly weather. Softball, it's mainly weather. Basketball, it can be weather related, but it could also be safety related. You wanna make sure that you have the most up-to-date information. And by having the most up-to-date information, you wanna be printing all that information at least a night before, if not the day of. And you wanna be studying it at least two days in advance. So what I typically do is on the day of the game, I print out my roster sheets and I print out my statistical sheets and I spend two hours before game time really trying my hardest to go through every single stat that every single player has and team stats and whatnot, highlighting key stats. So what are key stats that I highlight in basketball? Well, three-point percentage, field goal percentage, rebound margin. For example, I saw that Ohlone had a negative rebound margin heading into this game against Butte. And that was something that they were going to have to really, you know, pay attention to as well as their turnover ratio. Uh, and, you know, and that's another thing is takeaways, turnovers, all that type of stuff. You want to be looking at that as well as team fouls. Uh, who are the, you know, the top players to look at? Uh, for Butte, it was Montoyo. For Ohlone, it was Josh Misulu. Those are just the type of things that you want to look at. But you really want to make sure that you don't rush the process and you really take your time through it. And also today, on this specific game, I had two different roster sheets because not normally, but sometimes, my broadcasting colleague, Johan Lopez comes and joins me and if you guys have followed my trajectory through Ohlone you would know who Johan Lopez is he uh, took the Ohlone Tri-City News class with me and he was the sports anchor for Ohlone Tri-City News and he did a wonderful job and, uh, he expressed to me at the beginning of the semester uh, or the beginning of the school year this year that he wanted to be a broadcast announcer as well and so I told him about these opportunities that I had been getting from the school and uh, told him that we have another seat open if he wants to come and he came to a few games this was one of them that I really wanted him to come to and he was able to make it so um, Every single mark that you see me making on the roster sheets and on the stat sheets, I am making sure that I make the exact same markings on his copy of each sheet, uh, whether it's for Ohlone or for Butte, because I want him to know the highlighted information that I think is important and that I think he needs to use, as well as that I think that I need to use too. Um, and this is just good practice. You want to make sure everybody that is involved in a broadcast is just as prepared as one another. You don't want one guy coming in and seeming so ultra prepared and then the next guy seeming so under prepared. 
and then and vice versa you don't want to seem like you're underprepared compared to the next person who is overprepared because then that looks bad on you well really it just looks bad on the stream in general and it looks bad on the crew in general but it also looks just as bad for the person who is getting the shorter end of the stick because then you know they're looked at as the weak link and you don't want that because that reflects on you that reflects on your leadership whether you are the the one that is on top of things or not and so you know like that was something that i would had in my back in the back of my head you know i've been working with this team every single day for pretty much the entire season uh and for two months prior to the season starting and johan not really as much because he doesn't have much time to devote to it so i want to make sure that i help him out as much as i can uh, and show him the ways, you know what I mean? Show him the ways to, to easily get into it. And you'll hear in some of the calls, he really just got into it super quickly. There was a couple of moments where both of us kind of stumbled during the stream and during the broadcast that, uh, you know, the, uh, the other person was able to pick us up. He picked me up a few times, um, even uh, put together a, a quick play-by-play -play segment while I had to deal with an issue with my microphone at that current moment in time it was it, it was great he did a lot there and he really kept us you know focused and kept us centered and ready to go so that's just typically some of the stuff that i pay attention to when i am getting ready for a stream it's not necessarily all game 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 it's also okay who here on the crew needs help and how am i going to help them out during the stream because when it once it's go time it's go time there's no time to stop there's no time to ask for help there's just go 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 so once we get to that go 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 how ready am i and how ready is my partner and how ready is my partner is just as important as how ready i am so keep that in mind for anybody who wants to be a broadcaster you have to look out for your partner as much as you look out for yourself. All right, we with the boys right now. We got JP in the building, Khalid Elmi right here, and we got Maddie B driving, Hooper Maddie up in the building. Let's go OC, baby. Let's go. Let's go. It's Jay Lee. Jay Lee. All right, so we're playing trivia with the boys, so I got a good question for them. How many runs can be scored on a Grand Slam? How many runs can be scored on a Grand Slam? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, one more, one more. All right, all right, all right. How many points per game does Josh have? 18. 17. How do you do that? Trust me. 17.3. 21.5? 17.3. Like overall or? Oh, uh, points per game, overall. 17.3. Oh, wait, no, no, okay. Wait, wait, what was the question? How many Six points? <laughs> how many points yeah, per game does Josh? Uh, wait, wait, what was the question? All right. So you are correct. He has 18 and a half in conference, and I believe it is 17 and a half uh, in overall yes, game sir. by game. Yeah, so Josh, Josh that? is nasty, bro. You know, I completely slipped my mind. I'm actually singing national anthem today. And uh, it's definitely not going to be easy. Uh, a lot of people actually don't know this about me. I'm, I'm a singer. I uh, recently had a uh, vocal injury, a uh, minor one, like a little minor strain in my throat for kept me out for about a week and a half, I would say. Uh, and that came from, uh, it was like a remnant of uh, what I uh, had left of bronchitis and COVID-19, which I was diagnosed with early in January. We're heading into the back end of February now, so you know, it just gives you a time frame to set how long my voice has been kind of uh, under attack lately. So uh, it's really hard, uh, kind of keeping my voice in condition, and uh, gotta just keep it rolling, right? Gotta keep it rolling. Gotta make sure that you do everything uh, it is to be ready for uh, the next game, or the next, the next job, right? So. I'm ready to go. I'm locked in. Let's do this. For the land of the free and the home of the brave. Go.
Before the actual video begins, if you haven't yet, I do highly recommend you subscribe. It keeps me doing these videos. Now back to the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed so far. Lee still bringing the intensity himself and taking it out is Jalen Jones gets it to Michael Fashion. Now back over to Jalen Jones. Jalen Jones over to Jude Jennings. Jennings hands it off to Josh Nisulu. Now Nisulu. From the right side wing, gets a screen from Michael Fashion. Gets it over to Jalen Jones on the left side. Wide open, misses his three. Great shot here. Plenty of time, 16.05 to play still. As Nisulu's on the left side wing, gets it over to Matty being away, but wide open three, hits it home, and the Renegades have the lead. Now it's Nisulu over to Jalen Jones, now to being away, but being away, but inside for two, puts it up and hits it home, and the Renegades are back in the lead. Renegades are back in the lead. Was that eight in a row? 32, 103 left to play here in the half. Crowd coming alive here, 46 seconds. So we have enough for two possessions here as Jalen Jones is going to take it to the left side wing. Hands it off to Drew Jennings. Drew Jennings getting a screen from Michael Fashion. Gets it over to Nisulu. Spins his way into the paint. Gets it over to... Villanueva in the center for a three misses his shot. It is rebounded there by the Roadrunners. Great offense. Couldn't beat it. Now Jalen Jones taking it back the other way now. Takes it to the right side. Gets a screen from Michael Fashion as he fades it over to the wing. Plants his foot. Got to find a teammate. Gets it to Misulu. Misulu. Now going to take it back to the right side to Matty Villanueva who drives this one up the middle. Into the paint. Puts it up for two. Misses his shot. And it's rebounded by number three Marvin oh. Lee. And Lee has this one fought away from him as he was trying to get it over to Montoyo. The Renegade tap possession is Matty Villanueva over to Josh Misulu on the right side wing. Down to the left side wing to Drew Jennings. Drew Jennings looking to try and find a man. Trying to drive it back the other way. Almost gets knocked out of bounds as he loses control of the ball. Goes to Montoyo. Going back the other way. Montoyo now to Knowles. Back over to number 33. Lee for three. Two open threes so far. This defense got to step up if they want to play in this contention game. Great. Score 34-33. Renegades with five seconds to put up the final shot here. It is Jalen Jones driving it up the middle. Plants his foot. Puts it up for two. And it is no good. Oh, we have hit the half. The Renegades are down by one, and the Roadrunners are playing themselves a really freaking great game. So is our boys. This is going to be a really tight game, and I really uh, thought it was going to be. Man, wow, what a freaking energetic game so far. It's been fun to watch. It's been fun to call. Let's call it for the rest of the uh, second half that we have remaining. Oh, my God. Whew, I'm out of breath. So I did the national anthem, didn't sound too bad, could have sounded a lot worse. But yeah, I mean like, you know, just kind of just trying my hardest to uh, um, try and keep my voice in good condition, like I said before, you know, um, especially with like high notes and stuff, you can't really hit them as well as I hoped, um, especially not right now. I never had a good high note to begin with, so I'm not trying to say anything with that. But uh, you know, I know what's considered good for my level and uh, this one, not so much, but it's a lot better than a lot of other people. So let's do it. Nasty, bro. Josh is tough. Hey, who's the cutest out of us four? <laughs> God damn it. They're going to say JP. You go first. Oh, Me. Who? They're going to say JP. Oh, you. Me, well, who do you man. say? Who do I say? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, you know the hmm. Who am I going to dig my grave and say? All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna impose a rule. You can't say yourself. So, I'm gonna say Khalid. Bro, how are you gonna say Khalid, that? you called the finest guy. <laughs> <laughs> you said, who's the finest guy here? All right, you go, you go next. And the, and the rule is you can't pick yourself. The finest guy here? Mm-hmm. I'll show you, I'll show you. Hey, don't show yourself. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna show myself. Bro, I'll okay, it's you. good. I'll show you. It's already if it's not me, right? JP, don't move. <laughs> oh. That's that player right there. It's not even playing at JP. Oh, it's your turn, bro. No, no, no. It's Matty Who do you say, Matty Who do you say? Clip. JP. Mind up. What do you say, bro? You're speaking. It's like, it's like my twin right here. <laughs> Me? Me. All right. All right, my turn. I'd say uh, Mondo. Yeah. 
I'm gonna say why I'm, I picked JP. I mean, oh. See, this is, oh, see, this is hey. the thing that my abuelita does. This is a, a thing that my abuelita does all the time, right? So my nephews and I will be sitting at the table, right? Here's Jose. Here's Gabriel. Here's me, right? She'll point to me. She'll say, Jose Armando. Oh, and, she, and then she'll point to, my, to Jose's brother, Gabriel, and be like, I know, Armando, 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 right? And then, and then she'll come to me and she'll be like, I mean, Armando, I mean, see, Armando, right? So <laughs> I, I pick that up. Now, everywhere I go, no matter who I'm with, I always point to one person, I say a completely different name than the person. Yeah, I guess. So now, let me explain why I picked the lid. So, the reason why I picked the lid is because, well, so, gang. Who wouldn't want an Australian man? Not me. Ooh. Not me. Who wouldn't want an Australian man? Not mm -hmm. me. Not only that, he's actually a good person. A really great and like nice, he's a outgoing, man. fanatic person, right? That's good. And very good. he's very, very, he's like, very smart. One of the smartest on the team. Nah, that's cap. <laughs> that's cap. <laughs> But then, of course, JP, hey. based on looks alone, JP's I think honestly will probably be the favorite pick out of everybody. Oh, stop playing, bro. Oh, stop. Okay, my little, little brother. <laughs> Shut you. When, when you want somebody to, to just hype you up and, and, and make you feel good about yourself, that's Maddie. Right. You're lying, right? Right now. We're going to 
this is Jalen Jones from behind the uh, backboard. He's going to give it to Jude Jennings. And Jude Jennings is a heavy. Jalen Jones, here we go. Play is set up. It is Jalen Jones on the right side. Oh, yeah. And it was a heavy yeah. throw. So real quick, I want to send a quick thank you to her, Alina Kalpin. Funny yeah. enough, this is not the first time that she's featured on my channel. Yeah. So she's the only interview that we've had. Hey, there's Johan Lopez. He's pretty cool. All right. So yeah, this, this is the second time she's on the channel. We had her uh, interview posted. By the way, we got more interviews coming out pretty soon. But Alina, thank you for filming for me. Seriously. <laughs> and uh, I think now it's officially time for me to shut the fuck up because I'm having a vocal injury. Hey, look, there's Kira Sharma. All right, folks, that's it. That's it. I mean, f Christ, that really f***ing hurts. <laughs> that really, really hurts as I'm leaving Epler Gymnasium for the last time ever here at Ohlone. I'm going to get a one final shot as literally this is the last time I'll ever be working here. This is 
heartbreaking, heartbreaking. There it is, Epler, home of the Renegades. Let's get a good shot here. And as I always say, I wanna send a big thank you to my boss, Chris Warden. He hates it when I call him my boss because he always says, um, none of us have more power here. We're all equal. Uh, as much as, uh, as much as I love that he says that, we know that's not true. He has all the power. Uh, and he, what he says goes. And uh, he took a chance on me to be their broadcast announcer. And I am beyond happy that he did. Um, never, never, never take this for granted. As I'm leaving Ohlone College for the last time ever as an announcer, I'm really fucking heartbroken. So let's get out of here. Let's go home. Let's go home. Still got baseball and softball to worry about, but man, I am going to take the night off and just chill. It's been a heartbreaker. Big heartbreaker. Well, folks, that's it. That is a day in the life of being a basketball broadcast announcer, and I really hope you guys enjoyed. Um, as I said before, I would really appreciate if you guys click the like button, subscribe, even turn on notifications. Really trying to get back to uh, to uploading more regularly, at least. Um, and then if not, I mean, if you guys subscribe enough, it'll push me to definitely do it. So please click that subscribe button, leave a like on the video. And uh, let me know what your favorite part was about this video. This vlog was a completely different vlog than what we usually do. Uh, I think that it had a completely different tone than what we usually put together for vlogs. And I think that this might be the blueprint for vlogs in the future. I think that this is without a doubt the best project that I put together here and put up onto this channel. Uh, that and the 2021 Giants thank you video. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, putting a lot of work into it. Very proud of how it looks now that I'm done editing it. And want to send one big thank you to the basketball guys and ladies who are watching this video. Yes, I do see y'all. I'm going to be sending y'all a bunch of links, so hopefully you see this. Um, because the winter season was such a fun time working with all of you. I'm really sorry I could not put together uh, a game for uh, the women's team but I thought about doing this video literally the day of our broadcast or yeah the day of the game basically so uh, maybe next year all right folks with that being said I'm gonna edit this last bit together put this into the video and I'm gonna sign off thank you for watching thank you for the support hey Nikolai tells you to subscribe